I'm back and talking about boring vanilla bite alerts. Now this is to replace the old video back in 2020 where I looked about 12 years old, just to update you with a little bit of stubble. What is a bite alert? It kind of says what it is on the tin, right? But this is where you are buying typically a residential property. So not an office, not a pub, not industrial, a residential C3 use class property. Usually, let's say a two to four bed mid terrace property. And then what you're gonna do with this property is instead of living it in yourself, you're going to rent it to somebody else or let it out and get a return. All sounds incredibly simple, right? No. Not quite. Whilst it is a great, safe and substantial return, there's a little bit more to it. So how do you get a buy-to-let property? So naturally, one of the places you can get properties, believe it or not, is an estate agent. But actually, what you might find more effective is a lettings agent. You might think, well, why would you go to a letting agent? Think for a second, what can you guarantee a letting agent has a load of? Buy, to, let, properties and because of all of the changes through brexit section 24 russia ukraine the fuel price is going up I'm not going to mention the big c but it's been going on the last two years everything is this fluctuation a lot of landlords that have got 20 odd properties are like, oh i'm done i'm fed up i want to move on and what happens to these small letting agents is when they move on and they sell them elsewhere, they lose 20 contracts. So go to them and really build a relationship with them moving forward. Something I'm also a massive advocate of is direct to vendor marketing. Now, I love Facebook ads. You've probably seen some of them about. I hope you have if I'm not, I'm not doing enough, right? But Facebook ads, direct to vendor mail, direct leafleting, getting on some Facebook groups, getting on Gumtree, talking to as many people as possible under understanding their situation and putting in an offer that represents the value that you need to get. So what should you focus on when purchasing a buy to let? Well, there's a few key figures that we want to look at. There's ROCE and capital growth. By the way, there's a lot more to consider. There's IRR, the internal rate of return. There's the ROI. There's the compound effect. There's an ICR and a load more. I fully recommend that you use Lendlord for this. So Lendlord is the sponsor of today's video, but more importantly, they're a free software that you can go into, have a login and analyze all of your deals in so much detail more than I have ever seen before but I'll put a link below make sure to check it out it's completely free and it will give so much value the reason why we look at these two in particular is return on the capital we're going to underline that C is the most equivalent you can get to the money coming into the bank so for example if you have this house that's a hundred thousand pounds purchase price you're going to end up leveraging that so should you buy cash or mortgage? Well, if you can't buy mortgage, most people will purchase the property in cash. And then what they'll do is once they've got it rented out, they'll refinance the property and bring some money back in. If not, I strongly recommend to what I do and my investors is to purchase with a mortgage. Now, what happens with this is you typically get 75% loan to value. What this means is the bank or the lender will give you £75,000 for this and you need to put in £25,000. So then what you're going to get after that is you're going to need, let's say, for your stamp duty, which will be three grand, your a bit of a refurb, your fees, your legals, etc. Let's say fifteen thousand pounds. So in total on this property, you put in forty thousand pounds. Now, what we then have is that is going to be the money, and the return on that is going to be annualized. For example, if you rent out the property for seven hundred pounds. You times that by 12, that's going to be £8,400. Oh, right. Is that the return that you're going to get? Uh, no. £8,400 divided by the 100000 is 8.4%. That is referred to as the yield. Now, when you go to most estate agencies, if they know anything, they'll talk about yield. But 
it is just not the thing to measure. Yield actually doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't give you an indication of your returns. It's more of a comparative measure, i.e. you compare it against another investment. What we're really interested in, as I said, is the ROCE here. So the way we're going to work this out is what is the net, 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 net return for this property. What you'll find is after 10% management, 5% voids, which is reasonable, well, it's actually 0% right now, but be conservative, 5% voids, the, the EICR that you need, the, which is the electric certificate, the gas certificate, etc., you're going to end up at about 7% per annum on this property. What that will mean for this property is around £2,800 over the 40,000 equals 7% or we equals 0.07 which is 7%. Now that is really quite powerful. What are you getting in your bank account right now? Leave a comment below. I'll tell you what I'm getting, zero point buckle. But where does capital growth come in? You might not know this, but since 1086, the doomsday book where you could buy all of the UK land for £75,000, the values have doubled every 10 years. Now, that's not every single 10 years, but give or take, a property values doubles every 10 years. So let's test this out since the 1950s. Okay, average property price of £1,800. Let's call it £2,000 to help my little brain here. And we've got seven decades since then. 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, 32,000, 64,000, 128,000, and now 256,000. In fact, we're at 280,000, so we are 30 grand ahead of that theory. So people to say, yeah, but that's no guarantee. No, the past doesn't guarantee the future, but a thousand years is a pretty good indication, I would say. But let's be conservative and say 5%. The average is 7.9% a year, by the way. But let's say 5% on this 40,000 pounds here. Well, is it on the 40,000? No, it's on the actual value, which is 100,000 of the property, which is 5%, 5,000 pounds a year. So if we've got that 5,000, plus 2,800, you've then got 7,800 pounds on a 40,000 pounds investment. So 7,800 divided by the 40,000, this is gonna be pretty difficult, is 19.5%. Find me another investment that gets you that return. Now, when you're buying this, you need to make sure that you've got the ongoing cost right. So for example, you need to make sure you've got management, maintenance, voids. I'll usually bulk those in at around 15% in total, 10% and 5%, and I find that very accurate. The other thing that you need to make sure of is that it's got an energy performance certificate when you are buying it, which is an EPC. It needs to be a minimum of an E. It will be going up to C at some point, but there'll be loads of grants for that coming up available so make sure you're an E you also need an EICR which is your electrical performance certificate and you need a gas safety certificate other things regarding the tenants is you need to make sure they've got a right to let they've been provided that energy performance certificate you've got an AST in place you've got their deposit in a deposit protection scheme and make sure you're following the criteria I strongly recommend getting a letting agent just to take care of all of that for you and get it completely hands-free I've done a video on this already talking about refinancing properties but a lot of people talk about buy refurbish refinance get all of your money out we're just not in that market right now five years ago yeah that happened would it come around again yeah probably but we're not in that market anymore so for me I just don't waste the energy or time or risk on it instead I am buying a bread and butter boring vanilla buy to let that makes sense to me today and I'm not being funny 19 and a half percent makes good sense to me instead of worrying about getting all of my money out when I've then had my property empty I've been paying the bills which are sky high paying the council tax which are sky high and paying every Everything else like the risk which by the way is sky high and trying to get a slightly better return instead what I'm doing is I'll build my deposit put it in refinance in two years pull a nice chunk of money out 
topping it up with some more and I get to go again. I hope you got massive value from that video. If you've got any more buy to let questions, then put them in the comments below. I'm going to do an Instagram live in the next couple of weeks. You can find me at Jamie York Aspire. Head over there, give me a follow and I'll be doing an Instagram live. Also, if you haven't got Lendlord already and you want to test this and see what your investments are going to make in the next five years, click the link below on Lendlord. Make sure to sign up. It's completely free and you are going to get huge value guaranteed. If you're new to the channel and you want to get more buy to let advice and property advice in general, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. And of course, if you want to help me out and give back, hit the like on your way to the next video.